Well, I've got some updates. First, I want to thank everybody who's been uh, watching along with this series so far, um, all my videos and especially the last one, a lot of great comments and uh, feedback and encouragement from folks in the community. So I uh, really, really do appreciate that. And um, this video here really is, it's been a while, it's been almost a couple of months now since I posted that last video. And a lot's transpired since then. So as you can see from looking at the uh, Jeep, it's pretty much all together at this point. And uh, there's a lot to talk about here. So I want to uh, take an opportunity today to really walk you through what I had to go through to get this uh, MD1 body to fit. And by no means is this, uh, you know, what I would consider a ultra professional or, or you know, world-class bodywork type situation, I think. There's other channels that can give you better information about how to do it that way. What I'm doing here is this is sort of what I was able to do with some rudimentary tools and know-how and uh, just getting this body to fit with really, like I said, just some basic, uh, basic know-how and tools. So we'll go through that. And it's, I, honestly, I suggest watching this if you're, even if you're not uh, going to use one of these MD1 bodies, I, uh, even if you're restoring using uh, whatever, you know, the, those SGI tubs or, or even... Um, even an original tub, I think it's it's helpful to just kind of get a sense of some of the things that you might need to look out for and just be thinking about, especially if you're plate replacing panels and, and um, you know, having to deal with something that's 80 plus years old at this point. So, so let's dive right in. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll walk around the outside of this first and we'll kind of go through, I guess, you know what, we'll start in the back and then we'll kind of walk up back here to the front We'll look inside, we'll look underneath, and then we'll, we'll take a look under the hood. So let's, uh, let's mosey on back here. And let's start off by, uh, don't mind the uh, highway patrol approved uh, fuel assembly we got going on here. This is, this is good stuff. So let's start off in the back. Um, I'm going to be putting, you know, blinkers and, and uh, tail lights uh, on both sides. So of course I, I had to drill those holes, as you'll see here. Not a big deal. Again, you know that kind of modification, very acceptable, makes total sense, right? Uh, you'll notice that I have some of the footman loops hanging here. So on the tailgate, these holes were not drilled. So when you get a new tailgate, you're not going to get these holes. You also don't get the loops um, unless you have them. So I found a good company on eBay that makes really high quality loops, which seems to be a very similar kind of beveling. Um, to what the factory ones would have been, the flathead screws, things like that. So uh, I put those in place. Now there should be a footman loop on this side here, and there should be one on this side here, and that has to do with the soft top. Uh, where it belongs, so I, I've, been, I've been working with a 3A body, a, full, a fully original 3A that I've been, I've been using to, uh, as a template. Now this is a 2A, so it's going to be a little different. We'll get into one of those key differences later on when it comes to the seats. And I got a lot to tell you about the seats. Um, probably should just do a separate video on it. But, but anyway, looking at that 3A. So, so the challenge we have, and you, I don't know how well you can see it, but you'll see some kind of uh, spot welds here. Well, right where these footman loops are supposed to be, there's actually a, um, a crease inside here and some spot welds. So it wouldn't be easy for me to install these footman loops where they're supposed to be. So I'm debating whether I put them above. Maybe I'm going to mount them above. I'm not sure. But if I'm going to drill the holes, I want to do it before I get the body painted. Um, but in terms of the back of the Jeep, so that was what we had to do there. I think in a previous video, I already talked about having to weld on these mounts. These didn't come with it. So here and here on both sides for the soft top. Um, so got those welded up. Did that a while ago. You'll notice the spare tire mount. And I'll just try to give you a good shot of what this looks like in. Uh, I'll get my little bungee cord away out of the way for you here. Uh, there we go. Yeah, I'll just give you a little shot of what that looks like in. Um, behind here, you'll notice that I had to drill this hole. So of course, uh, of course there's a, a plate here, a, um, a brace. Well, my bottom hole went right in the middle of where that brace is. So I had to drill, drill a hole there. It was either that or fix it or try to relocate what I already did. Um, that's probably my mistake more than anything, but I wanted to make sure that basically this hole here and this hole here, they're, they're, um, on the same plane, they mount to a brace behind here. I don't know how good I can get in here. Yeah, you can see that. There's a brace here. And that's what really gives this structure. 
So you need to make sure you hit that. You want to hit the center of that. So that's what I did. This is super strong. I used grade eight um, fine tread bolts to mount that in. But anywho, I had to drill the holes for that. Again, not a really big deal. Um, something I can live with. So as we keep kind of walking around, we'll, we'll, we'll hop inside in a minute, but not a ton more here. Uh, getting the fenders in place was a little painful. We'll talk about that. Um, I really, I, for me, I had to ream out the top hole on both fenders on this side and on this side. I had to ream those two holes out in order to get the grill to be somewhat um, level uh, in, in center. So you'll see here kind of with the crease, we're pretty much straight uh, between the windshield frame, the grill, the hood. Everything's pretty much lining up, looks, looks presentable. Uh, getting these drilled in here so these holes weren't here. Um, so those holes had to be drilled. I had a, I have a factory hood. This is the repop hood. Had a lot of trouble with this hood, by the way. We'll get into that too. So had to drill those holes, um, had to drill the holes to line up these, which I actually think is a good thing because of where the grill and the fenders ended up landing. Uh, it, 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 you know, if those were already pre-drilled, that might've been problematic. So I think, I think it's okay that these holes weren't here. These holes, I feel, you know, they probably could have just been in place. It would have saved me some time, but it is what it is. Um, windshield frame so far has been pretty good. I have a separate video I, where I showed, I just used nut certs below here to put this um, seal on so I can take it on and off nice and easy. Uh, also had to drill and mount these mirrors. Now, again, they, I don't think they came with mirrors, but um, I'm, I put them on. I got these. These are, I think, from India. They're probably from the company that makes the SGI bodies. Um, I'll tell you, I ordered some stuff from them. It, it, these mirrors seem pretty decent, actually. I, I like them overall. They have kind of a weird-looking Willie's script logo on there that I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a original or just a knockoff or something, but it's kind of neat. I'm, I'm going to paint those, paint those black. But um, anyway... Windshield frame went up pretty good. I actually test fitted the glass. So the glass is in pretty good shape. I even uh, test fitted up here, you'll see the holes for the um, wiper and I'm just using the hand crank wipers. Uh, I'll show you those here. I have them, I have a spare block here too. Uh, you'll see here's the wiper, right? Very simple, it just mounts in the middle and you use it by hand to, uh, to wipe. So we gotta have one on both sides of the uh, windshield frame here. So with this hood, my gap, and I think I'm, I don't know if I remember if I talked about this in the other video. My gap um, here was enormous on, on the other hood. The problem was the hood, and if we, we step back on this side here, we'll notice we're looking real good now where we've got a nice nice seam here. The seam was was way out of proportion. This was lifted way up. Um, the hood was, was kind of bowed the wrong direction. Same on the other side. So we ended up getting pretty creative in order to bend this hood. Um, you know, I have a lift, I'm fortunate in that sense, I know a lot of folks might not have that. What I did was I put uh, these two two by fours on the ground, I spread them apart, slid them under the lift arm here, flipped the hood over, and you'll see the bottle jack is still there. Basically use the lift uh, as weight. So I, I uh, we'll, we'll open the hood real quick. So what I ended up doing was I, uh, see the back here, this back rib, I, I actually pushed, on, I pushed down on that with the bottle jack using the lift arms as a solid support with the weight of the Jeep on it. And what that did is that creased those arms a little bit, just enough so that when I fit the hood back on again, it bent it bent this area down. That's what I needed. I needed this area to be bent down so that this seam here, this line would come down closer to the fender and that it would look better. Uh, you'd have a better angle. Now, is it perfect? No, again, I'm not a body guy, so you know, it, it is what it is. But coming up here to the front, same thing here. I had to pull these out a little bit. So I had to pull open this because this was hitting the, the, um, the grill. And I even test, you can see here, I just, I haven't stapled this in yet, but this is the uh, reproduction, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, weather stripping. And I was just using that to test fit. <clears throat> Same on this side. I made a little bit more of a mess over here and I had to bang that out a little bit. But all in all, um, got things to be pretty symmetrical. And that's about as good as, as like I said, someone like myself is going to do. Um, and I think, it, honestly, it looks really good. Uh, speaking about the grill, we'll look up front here, and you'll notice the bulbs. I have 1157 bulbs in here. So, yes, I, I did this against my better judgment. I, I drilled these holes out just a tad. I wanted to have blinkers integrated in. 
So these holes are actually really small on the grill for this, this year grill that I have. It's an original grill. Um, so I drilled it out a little bit and I basically made my own little, um, you'll see them here, my own little, uh, just get some sockets from uh, Amazon or actually from the auto parts store that accept 1157 bulbs and, and uh, made a little plate, use some nut certs, um, use some nut certs, you'll see it up top there. And uh, you know, I'll put the cap on it when it's done and I'll have the nut cert on the other side and suck it all in, it grounds nicely. I tested it with the battery and you got nice bright uh, marker lights and uh, parking lights and, and blinkers. So uh, it's a, you know, it's nice. It looks good. It'll look, it'll look like it belongs there when we're all said and done instead of having something hanging off of it or whatever. Um, I do have an issue here in the middle of the uh, grill. You'll see this is kind of out of alignment. Uh, we'll get in there. So I got to fix that. I got to weld this up a little bit and tap a new hole when I'm when I'm done. But overall, this was by far one of the hardest parts is getting the fenders straight and getting the hood straight. This was, you know, this was a challenging piece of the piece of the puzzle uh, for sure. Let's move on inside. A uh, lot to talk about inside. I guess we'll talk about the windshield frames first. So these these clamps here, I will tell you the ones that came with body, you know, junk. I'm fortunate that I had these re original ones. These fit a lot better. The, the reproduction ones, this uh, lip here, at least the ones that I got, maybe they're not all this way, but it's not long enough. So what ends up happening is it doesn't catch right. The latch just doesn't catch. So on both sides, it wasn't catching. I had these original ones. I had to heat them up, unfreeze them. There was some snap bolts. I, I fixed them. I'm going I'm to clean them up and paint them when, uh, when we, I paint the Jeep. But these work really well. They work better than the new ones. So I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm going to go with the new ones there. <clears throat> so there's a lot to talk about in here. I, this could, this could, I could go on for an hour easily about this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is let me, let me grab a flashlight while we're talking about this. I guess what I'm going to say is there's one thing here with this Jeep that really bothers me uh, more than anything else in terms of you know, what I had to do to modify it. And we're going to, uh, we're going to zoom on in on that in a second here. So hang tight. Let me grab a flashlight and we'll, uh, we'll dive in. So first off, you'll notice I had to drill a hole here for the body mount. That's what this is in the center of the floor. You have to drill a hole for your seat. We'll talk about seats later. Had to weld in this clamp on the side for the um, fuel tank mount. You'll see the kind of how it burnt through the paint on the other side. Um, had to drill a hole on the other side of the seat here into the body. I used a nut. Let's see if I can get a better shot of that. Put a nut cert in place to hold that. And uh, this area here is really, really tight. And I did a separate video on the PTO. Again, put a nut cert in place. I, I had to expand the window where the PTO is. It was totally in the wrong spot. Now this Jeep didn't have a PTO. I'm really glad I bought one and put it in because this whole section in the middle was uh, was just totally, totally off. And if I had to cut that later on, once I painted the body, I would have been really upset. So um, PTO is in good shape. It, it you know, works good. Um, made my own little plate underneath the factory plate there where the boot is. You'll see another plate that I made. And again, use some nut certs to uh, get that in place. You'll notice on the transmission tunnel, um, one of the bolts here, I actually had to eliminate. It was in the way of, uh, well, if I take all this apart, uh, you'll see the kind of the cuts I had to make into the transmission tunnel way off, um, way, way off. So uh, I don't need that bolt. I'm just going to fill that in with weld and I'm going to actually kind of weld up a new, uh, shape up a new tunnel cover using this one as a baseline to get rid of this extra space. I was fortunate I had to cut some more into the body over there for the, um, for the transfer case, but the, um, the, uh, uh, the bracket that goes around it, uh, looks like it'll fit fine. It'll cover up what I had to do. So I'm, I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. And if we look at the dash, I had to enlarge this hole for your light switch. I, this hole didn't exist. This is for your, um, high beam indicator. That hole didn't exist. So I had to drill that hole and the, for the throttle and choke cables, um, had to enlarge those holes. This hole was the right size. This is for the uh, your dash light. These holes seem to be good. Um, and I'm actually gonna use the ammeter. So this voltmeter is gonna go down here into this little aftermarket uh, gauge thing. And I might just leave it in there for a little while or take it out. Um, but again, I put some nut certs in the dash so I can cleanly take that in and out. Um, I also had to enlarge the hole over here where the uh, key ignition switch goes. And of course I had to drill the um, holes for the plaque for my, my Jeep plaque. 
So all those holes needed to be drilled, enlarged, fixed, whatever. Again, not a big deal. None of this stuff so far to me is a big deal. Uh, I think in a prior video, I told you I had to uh, kind of edit the uh, where the steering column is. So I had to make a bigger bracket. So I did that. I made a bigger cover out of some steel, got a hole saw, five inch hole saw, and a, I forget what size the middle one was, but um, so I made my own there. The rubber boot that goes in there fits nicely. So that's all well and good. The thing that bothers me the most, and I'm gonna try to slip you in here, is you'll see here we have our, where our throttle arm, I guess that's what we call it. Well, that was hitting the body. That arm that you see right there was hitting the body. And I couldn't figure out, well, I, I was having trouble pushing the body forward. So of course it was getting stuck on that. But also the, uh, my pedal wasn't really moving. And it wasn't obvious to me at first what was going on. And uh, when I got in under the hood with the flashlight, I was able to see paint wearing off. So I painted that gray onto the body. And sure enough, I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty bad spot. I mean, it's a seam on another seam. And I had to cut that. I mean, I really had to cut this in place. I wasn't going to rip the whole body off just to, uh, I'm going to, now when I take the body off for paint, I'm going to go ahead and fix this hole and, and clean it up. And I'm probably going to put a removable panel here because there's a cotter pin that actually holds um, this this rod onto the engine block. And if that ever goes, I mean, it's it's next to impossible to get at that um, under the hood. So I might, I might use this to my advantage and keep the window there, but it's just a bummer that I have to cut such a, a, a big hole ultimately to, to, for this to fit on a brand new body that was designed for, you know, a two way. I mean, my frame is really straight. The engine is straight. Everything, you know, the drivetrain is straight. Everything's in the right spot all the clutch linkages, everything lines right up. So from my perspective, this part of my frame is, is really good. I mean, there's really no issues with it. So why on earth the body didn't line up there? And the rear body mount holes line up perfectly with, with the rear uh, cross member. So even, even on the front, things line up on the frame in the body where they look like they're supposed to. The fenders line up where they're supposed to. So everything's lining up where it's supposed to be, body to frame. But this center section of the of the body is really just this whole area here where the where the from the PTO to the transmission tunnel to something's just not right there. And um, I forget the exact measurement. So from when we look at the rear um, wheel well, this is shorter on a three A body, and it's longer on a two A body. So I have a two A body. Why does that matter? Well, it matters because well, first of all, this is a two A, so it's it is the right body tub. But it matters because of the seat. So this is actually an original seat bottom I have here. But this seat, um, if we look at this leg, where, where this leg falls, the seat that I was trying to use uh, is over here. It's kind of on a, it, you can't see it too good here, but the, the angle of the leg is totally different. So what's happening is this leg, uh, instead, of, instead of mounting to the floor here, it was like over here. And it was totally the wrong seat for this. The, the issue is, is the 3A seat actually sits back another two inches because this uh, fender well here is, is wheel well here is another two inches further back. So the seat can be bigger. So I wasn't able to use the seat I had. I thought it was a 2A seat, but it's actually a 3A seat. So um, I had to buy a new 2A seat and, and, and uh, put it here. The 2A seat still needed some modification because back here where I have this leg, it's hard to see it, but uh, it actually, this foot, originally mounted up here. That put it on top of this um, ridge here when it was in place, so it would have been unstable. So I had to cut it and then re-weld it. I gotta clean it up a little bit and paint it and stuff, but I re-weld it so that this foot would actually land on a solid part of the body. And you can see I have that foot on a body mount. These are those body mounts you can get from Kaiser Williams. I really like them, they're, they're nice mounts. Um, and you'll see the passenger seat, we'll talk about that too. And actually, if we look at the driver's seat again here, you'll see I use some more body mounts um, to, to really get this nice and sturdy um, and absorb things a little bit. I actually put a nut certain place. You can see it on the other side. It won't be that long of a screw when it's there for real. But the idea is, is that um, I know you can bolt this seat there. That's, I think, what it might have been from factory. But I didn't feel a need that we needed another bolt. Um, and I like the idea of using the rubber, particularly... On the on, on here and on the back part of it, a lot of the weight is your weight is going to be pushing on that, and um, I think it's just nice from a paint job perspective to uh, to have that in place. So this driver's seat really needed some a lot of modification and a lot of just fussing with it um, to get it in place. 
And uh, so we'll kind of go from there. Again, you, I also had to, uh, just to be complete, I had to install this. I had to drill the hole here for the uh, fuel tank hold down. Uh, you'll see that, I, again, I used a nut cert. I know nut certs wouldn't have been used back then, but it just makes my life a lot easier. Um, so if you, you, as long as you do the nut cert right, you know, go crazy with it, um, they'll last forever and uh, put a little anti-seize on them when you assemble them for real and you'll, you'll never have a problem. So we'll move over here to passenger seat side. And, and so first thing you're gonna say, you know, why, hey, why is there a hole in the side of your, uh, your body here? Well, there's a hole there because there's actually a pin that, uh, that goes in to put these two, your two shifter rods. It's almost impossible to get that pin out um, once the body's mounted. If you ever need to service this, you'd have to lift the body up. So I drilled a hole on the side so you can pull the pin in and out. The pin goes straight in and straight out of the transfer case. It, it's almost impossible to do it with the body on. So I drilled the hole, we'll, we'll clean up nice, we'll put a grommet on it, um, it'll look good. Again, I had to drill the, the hole in the body here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm debating whether I go with these like elevator bolts versus a standard sort of carriage bolt. Uh, I think carriage bolt might've been what would be there. I'm gonna get them both painted and I'll decide when I assemble it, but I had to drill that. And of course, when we look underneath, they, they ended up in a weird spot on the hat channel. So again, not great, but it's fine, it's sturdy. Uh, these went in good. The, the, um, these are, you know, factory 2A passenger seat in actually really good shape. And we got the swivels here. Those are mounted in. That's nice and tight. My passenger seat is actually really nice and sturdy. Um, I know a lot of these flop around. Sometimes they're crooked if we look from the back. Mine's actually in pretty good shape. It's pretty straight like the driver's seat is. Um, so what I did is a couple things. Um, what I did here is you'll notice a wing nut. So what I did is I used one of those elevator bolts. Uh, we can we can all untwist this so I can show you. I used an elevator bolt and welded it to the frame. Uh, and the reason I did that and I didn't drill a hole is because this section of, I'm sorry, not the frame, the body. This section of the body is there's a bunch of seams and they overlap. It's not a good spot to be drilling a hole. Um, and so I didn't drill a hole there for that reason. Let me take the wing nut out in the washer. And you'll notice now, here we go, let's move this. When I lift the seat up, just watch down there, you'll notice that, you know, we come and go from that uh, nice and easy. You see, I use the body mounts again. Let's lift this up as a nice cushion, so for when this is painted. But again, I just welded um, welded an elevator. I gotta clean up a little bit, but welded a elevator bolt there. Put this on top. Um, and, you, and you'll notice here on the, the fender, same thing. I use body marks. And that, sorry about that. Body mounts, a nut certain a bolt. And, you know, these can be replaced over time if, if they wear out or whatever. These are pretty hefty mounts, though. Um, for the amount I'm going to be driving this, I'm not really too worried about it. And what it does is it gives a nice cushion uh, to this whole thing so that it doesn't rattle and drive you nuts when you're driving down the street. So that's uh, what I have, and this will lock the seat in place from bouncing around. This isn't really a structural thing. This is really just to, um, like I said, kind of keep things keep things simple. Um, toolbox, I didn't really have to do anything there. These, these mount into the toolbox, just so you know. One of the things I was actually thinking about is, see how there's this foot here? I was like, well, why not just put a foot on this side, you know, instead of resting on the fender? I think the reason they didn't do that from factory is you're actually resting on the toolbox and there's really no support under here. It's actually very thin. So if you were to put a foot here and have it rest on the floor, you'd be putting a lot of weight on this thin sort of toolbox cover, unless you reinforce that somehow underneath. This corner here, like I said, this is a strong corner. So that explains why they, they used this in my mind, at least that's why I think they, they rested it against this. But um, anyway, that's what I did to make it fit. You might think it's a good idea, might not, I, you know, is what it is. Be interested to hear what people think or what other people do, but that's what I did. And like I said, my, my seat sits good, it's comfortable, it doesn't rattle like crazy. Um, so it, it works, works for me. Um, all right, I think that kind of sums up sort of the top and what's going on in there. Why don't we, um, we'll do the bottom last. Well, while we're down here, why don't we just jump into the engine compartment and just take a quick look. This won't take long. So I already explained to you what went on here. So we'll open the hood up. <clears throat> and uh, so, you know, battery fits in good. I'm, again, I went 12 volts. That all fits in good. Radiator fits in good. Um, these brackets are old that I have for my air cleaner, so I had those were bent. So most of my trouble with that was my my old brackets were bent, so I had to fix those. 
So that's all, that's all better now. Um, was able to get in here, let's see if you can see it. You can kind of see it there. The cable for the um, e-brake and all of that is in place. Um, that was pretty easy to do. There was really no, no issues with that. Um, in terms of the holes on the firewall, looks like I have everything I need there. So we should be good. I drilled another one for the wiring harness to come through. I had to drill a bunch of holes on the fenders. Uh, so for our wiring junction block, our horn, um, hold downs for our wires, things like that. Um, I laid the wiring harness out to just kind of get a sense of where the wires are gonna go and tried to get any holes I could in place ahead of time for that. So um, so yeah, I think that's, that's in pretty good shape. Uh, overall so overall under the hood pretty pretty simple actually no real um, nothing really major to report of under here so why don't we uh, let me get this hood down and let's jump underneath the uh, under the lift here and we'll uh, you know safety first that kind of stuff get this puppy up and uh, we'll talk some more <laughs> Let's make sure the lift is uh, rested on uh, on the locks before we go underneath. And I always like I, you know, use an opportunity to talk to folks about lift safety. I mean, definitely make sure you got your vehicle rigged up right. And I, I always do a little test, get it one inch off the ground, shake it a little bit, make sure the the vehicle's uh, it's nice and stable. And um, always rest the lift on the uh, on the on the dogs when you can. Don't leave it resting on the hydraulics. So let's come back here now and um, take a look. So again, body mounts, um, we've got our mounting locations in the rear. You'll see the bolts here. Those all are in good shape um, in the right spot. No big deal there. Had to drill holes here, up here for the mounts. Now those mounts aren't in place. I got to, um, again, I'm, this body's been on and off a couple times, so I'm gonna be taking it off again, but I had to drill two holes in the frame. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, not in the frame, in the, in the tub. Um, to get to the frame there. Uh, if we come forward a little bit more, so here's the PTO. Like I said, I'm really glad we have another video on the PTO, but got that in place. You can kind of see up above, let's get you up there if we can, some of the holes I had to cut and uh, you see my nut certs and things there. Um, you'll see the spring here for the um, emergency brake tension. Um, I actually used a, uh, this is, this is for the emergency brake, but this, this piece actually goes up on the uh, firewall, but I had an extra one. So I put it here and I, again, two nut certs into the hat channel and I uh, made that removable. And that's what we're using for the spring here. Um, in terms of mounting our e-brake cable, uh, I already had, there's actually already a hole in the cross member for that. And there's special clips. There's, they're, they're opposite of each other and they have an F on them for Ford. I don't know if they're old or if they're reproduction, but um, so those clips is one up on the firewall and one down here. But that's all in place good. This is all mounts good, the e-brake works. Um, had to drill a hole here for the, for the uh, fuel tanks. You'll see I had to ream that out a little bit. So that was something else that needed to be done. Uh, you'll see here my clutch rod. I had a lot of drama with the clutch rod. Ended up going with aim joints and uh, extending that longer. So on this side of things and uh, on this side of town here where the um, transmission uh, get the light over here as best I can where the transmission uh, to the clutch fork um, that's just using a standard cable it's, I know it's a little hard to see I don't know why the camera's not there we go uh, but yeah that's all standard stuff but on this side here again I used a threaded rod uh, 5 16th fine thread and two aim joints um, to get the length that I wanted uh, on that so <clears throat> it's a handy handy way to do it if you need to make an adjustment. It's a little easier to do it on this side because you only have so much cable and tread on on this side to adjust, adjust your clutch. Um, so that had to be done. Uh, let's see, moving forward. Also be careful when you're using a lift, this brake shield, this uh, heat shield is always gets in the way. I've whacked it now a few times with the lift arm. So just something to think about um, on that side. Coming up here to the body, I told you the hat channel is in an unfortunate place. So if we look here at the body mount, you know, that's really not ideal uh, in terms of where that's coming through. Uh, but on the other ones here, on the mounts, they're, they're actually in decent spots. So not the end of the world. 
um, those are in pretty good spots. But these front ones on both sides, not, not in the most ideal spot. You also see here uh, my clutch, um, clutch pedal was rubbing up against the body a little bit. So I just went here with the grinder and gave, made sure we gave ourselves plenty of space. This, this piece moves back and forth a little bit, actually. Not a lot, but it can a little bit. So I did that. Um, but again, you know, this piece here lines right up on the, on the body with where it's supposed to be. So everything is generally, like I said before, kind of where it needs to be. So I, I feel pretty confident the body's mounted appropriately. Um, and actually, frankly, I mean, that's really all that had been done to here. Just, you know, had to drill the holes. So I'll show you the other side if you're interested in that. Um, again, same thing with the body mounts, generally all in the right spots. Um, and with the exception of this one, this one's a little better actually than the um, driver's side front. This one's, you can't see it coming through the side. So, um, so not, not bad overall. Um, and uh, that's kind of where we're at. So what the next step is, is we're going to uh, go ahead and basically take the body off now. So we're gonna disassemble the Jeep and take the body off, um, all the body parts. I was going to paint it myself. I actually decided to bring it to a, um, a shop that's going to do it for me. Um, and excited to have them do it. I think it'll come out better than what I'm going to do for sure. And honestly, I'm just tight on time. I, I really wanted to do it, but uh, I'm probably not going to be able to realistically do it this summer. And I really wanted to get, get going in the Jeep this summer, drive it around and start enjoying it. So I'm going to bite the bullet, have someone take care of that for me. Um, you know, real quick, one thing I want to say, if, you, if you're just in summary on the body here and uh, this whole experience, honestly, other than that incident with the firewall, with my, my, my throttle rod there, or the throttle linkage, the body, you know, really wasn't that bad. Um, the Actually, now that I'm looking at the Jeep, one more thing I'll mention to you is uh, up here by the um, gas filler, fuel filler, I had to ream out. Um, I had to ream out a little bit of that as well uh, to get that to fit. But on, honestly, it, it wasn't bad. I mean, most of what I had to do was drilling holes that it kind of made sense. Like your Jeep's going to be a little twisted or a little weird or whatever. So drill your own holes and put the things where you want them to be. That part, totally acceptable and fine. Um, the transmission area wasn't awesome, but easily fixed, easy to access, easy to work on. The firewall piece, I mean, it's a really a structural part of the body in a lot of ways and such a bad area to work on. I mean, it's going to be really hard for me to make a nice panel, make something good. I, again, I'm, I'm an amateur at these things, so I'm not, I'm not a metal worker, really. Uh, I'm sure I could hire someone to do something, but I mean, that kind of defeats the purpose of this project. I want to do as much of this as I can myself. And, uh, you know, so it's going to take me quite a bit of effort to, to make that look presentable and make that... Um, make that into something decent without creating further obstructions while doing it. So that that part was really the only part that I would say I really regret about this. And I hope if they're watching this uh, video, I, you know, overall, like I said, it's it's really not a bad setup, but that one piece is really, uh, really kind of unfortunate. So if there's anything you can do for the future, uh, folks making this or watching it, I think that'd be great for, for future buyers. But uh, I mean, overall, I, I think this has been a, a good enough experience and, and for what it is, I'm pretty happy with it. What I will say, and just, uh, you know, no, no uh, endorsements here or anything like that, but uh, if you are gonna be doing this kind of work, a couple of tools that I recommend, it doesn't have to be this brand, but I have this cutoff tool here, it's a Milwaukee, um, but it's got a nice shield on it. It can go forward and reverse so you can change the direction which kind of changes where the sparks fly, frankly. Um, this has been really helpful. I've used this a lot in some of the cutting I had to do with the body. By far, this tool here, this sort of um, cordless die grinder, uh, has been awesome. And these bits, these sort of reaming bits, have been invaluable. I've got a whole case of these I bought off of Amazon, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks. And I've really only used this one bit, um, but there's a whole whole case of these bits that go with this. I have to tell you, to make things fit on here and, and to widen these holes up and, and, and get the body mounts in the right spot and just all the little tweaks I had to do, um, this tool and this bit have been invaluable to me. I mean, really, I don't even know. <laughs> I, I might have given up without it. So uh, just an important thing to have. 
a good set of drill bits. I mean, this, this is Harbor Freight stuff, but these drill bits have actually been pretty good. Been pretty happy with them overall. Uh, had to go out and get a right angle drill um, as part of this, so I think that's a good tool to have as well. Um, I've got all different brands of tools, but my more recent stuff, I've been going with Milwaukee just to, you know, have some good batteries and, and, and things of that nature. But the right angle drill was key. There were some holes I had to drill on here where by the time I got to where they were and the level of assembly of the body, I would have had to have taken the body apart or taken it off in order to drill the hole. And having the right angle drill um, had allowed me to, uh, you know, not have to do that, right? Or to get into a tricky spot or get under the dash, right? You know, so I, you know, again, I recommend you go with whatever, you know, brand you like, but just having those, uh, that capability is, is, uh, is really nice. So anyway, I, I know it's a really long video. I'm not sure how many people are going to make it this far, but if you have, thank you so much for, uh, for watching. If you got this far, let me know in the comments, uh, if you found this valuable or not. And uh, probably the next time you see this Jeep, it'll be back together again and uh, hopefully have some paint on it. And we'll leave the color as a, uh, as a mystery for now. But uh, again, thanks for watching. If I can answer any questions, if uh, just whatever, whatever it is you want to uh, say or, or ask, do so in the comments. Thanks for watching and uh, be well.